Okay, friends. Now let's talk about another example of the epistatic gene problems. And in this case, uh, we'll be looking at the problem of duplicate dominant epistasis. Now we have seen the example of recessive uh, epistasis. Now let's talk about the duplicate dominant. That means two genes will be found here which are dominant epistasis, which are both of them will be the dominant type of epistatic gene. Now the example is the purple color of 4 o'clock. The purple color of 4 o'clock is controlled by chromogen. Now the dominant gene is cap C. So chromogen expression dominant is cap C over the small. This is purple chromogen and the recessive one is the white chromogen. This is small c. And the enzymes required for the pathway is controlled by E. And the enzymes required for the pathway, dominant cap C, recessive, no enzyme is a recessive, which is small e. Cap C means all the enzymes are synthesized and no enzyme is small d. Okay. Now, Now the pathway is controlled by cap C and its absence is destroyed by small e. The absence of e is destroyed by small e, so small e means no enzyme, that's true. Now what will be the F2 individual of the 4 o'clock if the mating is in this way? Crossed with this. So this is the question. Okay. So now again epistatic case or this is called the duplicate dominant that means we here will be having two genes both of them will be dominant both of them will be epistatic okay now here purple chromogen giving a uh, cap c white is small c so now very important point about this uh, question enzymes are required for the coloration right because the pathway if you uh, go through the chromosome pathway or the production of color pathways then what we can see we are having different chemical mediators they will be converted into different forms utilizing enzymes to finally give us the chromosome right so we are having different uh, by uh, different products different steps of the enzymatic reaction to get this purple chromosome so we must require enzymes for the accomplishment of this process and get the purple coloration of the flower now so we need both. We need presence of this cap C and also E to get the purple color. And we also need the presence of uh, this enzyme and also this to get give the white color. So chromosome will be required as well as this enzyme. Enzyme is the most important part here, which is playing the tricky role in this question. Without the presence of enzyme, if even if the purple chromosome is present, there will be no coloration. So hear it very importantly because this is the most important point. Except for this enzyme, if the enzyme is not expressed, if there is the phenotypic expression, a genotypic expression of small e is there, there is no cap C, no enzyme. That means even if this purple chromosome is present, even if this cap C is expressing, but still, except for the enzyme, there will be no coloration of the flower. The flower will be white. That's the most important part. So for a flower to become purple, we must require both cap C and cap C. Now if someone is having cap C with small e, it will give white flower, not the purple flower. So this is the key to understand this problem. Now if you understand this part, the rest of the things will be the simple probability rule. I'm going to tell you. Now let's see. This again, this is kind of cross, small c, small c. So if we get this kind of cross in the in the first generation, so both of the homozygous, one recessive, one so in F1 generation, what are going to be the F1 generation? F1 generation, all, all of the F1 generation are going to be this. So finally, in F1 generation, we will be having a cross between them. So this is the parental generation, this is F1 generation. We need the phenotypic ratio at F2 generation. So here, we will be crossing both of them. So both are the heterozygous. So again the ratio will be uh, 3 is to 1. The phenotypic ratio will be 3 is to 1. And the phenotypes here will be, again say let, let it write, write it this way. So again 1 is to 2 is to 1. Cap C, Cap C means uh, purple. And so purple, so we are will be writing purple is to, this is going to be white. So purple is to white will be 
3 is to 1 and again if we utilize the same pattern with enzymes so what will be the results so this is 1 2 and 1 because both of them are again heterozygous so again both capsi capsi and capsi small e are going to be with enzyme so enzyme no enzyme ratio 3 is to 1 from this kind of small uh, monohybrid uh, Punnett square we can do it but we can do it in our mind because I have told you and I have uh, taught you how to do this in your mind I hope you know that if you don't know just please go back to the first video of genetics problems because I always tell you the introductory videos are the most important ones because where I give you the overview of the whole process so just go there see the introductory videos and these problems will be just be solved just a blink of a second right so now purple and enzyme so purple enzyme and then purple white okay oh sorry purple enzyme then enzyme white it will be 9 is to 3 now again purple no enzyme and white no enzyme so again 3 is to 1 so what are going to the phenotype now remember for having a purple phenotype we need both capsi and scapsi here a purple and enzyme so we get a purple phenotype here so purple phenotype we get 9 now enzyme with white again we will give white so white is 3 here and here is purple expressing no enzyme now remember I have told you purple expressing no enzyme will give us white and also white with enzyme is also giving us white so here both the case white with enzyme giving us white purple with no enzyme is also giving us white so ultimately the white is 6 right and white no enzyme so that means this is also a white so again this is another white so 7 so this ratio will be 9 is to 7 so only two type of phenotype will be observed either purple or white and the ratio will be 9 is to 7 because purple should be the only one case where both the type of dominant genes must be present now here we can see the expression of both the genes capsi as well as capsi are important to give us purple color so what we are looking at here both capsi and capsi these two genes are complementing the features of each other except one oh, except of one they can't achieve this purple color so they are complementing their effects so we call this capsi and capsi here complementary genes we call them complementary genes now this is a very important uniqueness of uh, double dominant uh, sorry duplicate dominant epistasis in case of duplicate dominant epistasis we will be having the complementation in genes now, in case of recessive epistasis I forgot to mention in those case there are supplementation between genes and we have seen the supplementary gene effect but in case of duplicate dominance we will be seeing this complementary gene effects now this is the important part about this problem and I hope it will help you to understand thank you